The next section on our assessment is uh, the lab data. So if you have the date that the labs were drawn, you can include that here. And then you'll see some of the labs that we talked about and that are referenced in your book and on the PowerPoint. Hemoglobin and hematocrit, remember indicator of iron status, and you would write the value in here and then indicate if it's low, normal, or high using the reference in your text. Okay, and then you might um, indicate why you think the labs are out of range. Okay, so if the hemoglobin and hematocrit are low <clears throat> and they have a diagnosis of iron deficiency, that would make sense. Or if they have a diagnosis of blood loss with surgery, you would add that there and that would make sense. Okay, then you have sodium, potassium, glucose blood urea nitrogen or BUN, creatinine, albumin, prealbumin, cholesterol, triglycerides, and total protein. Now you might not have all of this information in your text and that's okay. We'll, we're going to work through this as uh, we progress in the classes here. But for the um, labs that are outlined in your text and on the PowerPoints, you can utilize this information. Now, as a student and also as a practitioner, you will find that oftentimes there aren't any labs or there are just a few labs. So not every patient is going to have these labs um, available to them. Okay. This next section we'll get to um, later when we talk about uh, charting in the medical record. The next page of the assessment form is our calculations. So yesterday in uh, the video lecture, I talked about the Hamway method for figuring ideal body weight for uh, patients. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do for formulas and calculations is you're going to look at their height and weight, which we found over here. And then you're going to complete their ideal body weight calculation. Okay, so again, it lists here. For males, it's 106 pounds for the first five feet and six pounds for every inch over five feet. For females, it's 100 pounds for the first five feet and five pounds for every inch over. One thing that trips students up is if a patient is below five feet or over five or over six feet. Okay, so remember there are 12 inches to a foot. Okay, so five feet. 5 times 12 is 60. So someone who is 5 feet tall is 60 inches. Someone who is 6 feet tall would then be 12 more inches, right? So they would be 72 inches. So the ideal body weight for a male who is 6 foot, we would take 106 pounds, and then we would take 6 for every inch over five feet, and that would be 12, right? So six times 12, help me do, I'm gonna just do this math here quick. Six times 12 is 72. And then we're gonna add that to the base of 106. And an ideal body weight for someone who is six feet is 178, okay? The part that trips most students up is using the male or the female. Okay, always use the 106 for males and the six, six pounds for each inch and the 100 for the females and the five pounds for each inch. Okay, then we're going to take the current body weight. So what they weighed, which you put right here, and we're going to divide that by the ideal body weight that you just figured out here. Multiply that by 100 and that's going to give you a percent. Okay. A percent below 100, like an 87% ideal body weight, is going to indicate that that person is underweight. A percent above 100, like 132% ideal body weight, is going to indicate that that person is over their ideal body weight. Now, if your patient had some weight loss or weight gain, you can figure out their percent usual body weight. So that's taking their current body weight divided by their usual body weight times 100, and that'll give you the percent usual body weight, okay? So the usual body weight you're going to glean from either the patient or from the medical record. The next calculation that we'll complete is the body mass index, and you all are experts in that. Remember, that's uh, weight in kilograms over height in meters 